What is going on guys, coming at you today with my uh, deck profile, my demise, ruin deck profile, the new ritual stuff. Um, yeah, so this deck is actually one of the, the most fun decks I've had in a while. It's an OTK based deck um, and it's uh, a lot based off of the, what was the guy's name, Lithium. Um, he made a deck pro, he made a, a profile on it on uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Pro and I'm playing a lot of it on Yu-Gi-Oh Pro and it actually kind of... It can stand, it's kind of like a glass cannon in a way that if you, when you play it, um, you can actually, I mean, it can take down a lot of the meta stuff. Like I was playing against like Ultra Guys, uh, Gokies, Trick Stars and stuff like that. And if you get the right cards in your hand, you can actually win the game in one turn, um, which is pretty cool. So this is a going second deck. If you go first, not a lot to actually do. I mean, you can always like end off with one. Uh, you can either end off with Demise or Ruin. Um, but they are acceptable to when the two of them are on the field all well and good to have a lot of defense but there is still ways to get them off the board the main thing you want is the two of them on the board on the second phase um which is what the whole deck is about so i'm going to explain what they do and explain the cards and my choices and stuff so we run two demise supreme king of armageddon now this is obviously like a remake of a really old uh, deck and stuff and this is kind of a, a real budget version so this is a Anybody can pick this up, and if you want to kind of go to like uh, locals or stuff like that uh, and actually play this deck, if you draw right, you can beat uh, the meta a lot of the time. And I know that's bad to say, but I've been playing a lot of this deck, and I have a lot of OTKs. I was going to do a, a video of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Pro, but um, I just never got the chance to do it. So we run two Demise Supreme King. Now, there's no need to do any more than two because you will uh, run into this card. Um, there's a lot of search and stuff as well into it. So... This card is basically, you need um, Cycle of the World to Ritual Summon it. So it's not searchable because uh, Cycle of the World is the old card. Um, the old, uh, what's it called? End of the World or whatever. Um, and Cycle of the World. They're the two new uh, ritual spells and stuff. Okay, so anyway, let's, let's stop, stop talking crap. So um, basically what this is, is uh, you can pay 2,000 life points to destroy all, destroy all cards your opponent controls. Uh, and then your opponent loses 200 for each. Uh, but if you use r only ritual monsters to summon this, you don't have to pay any life points. So that's basically the way that card works. It's a level 10, um, which isn't too bad. Uh, but it's it's really, really actually very, very easy to get out. It's very, very easy to get out one or the other. And then uh, when you get the two out, you should win the duel. Uh, so next is Rune, Supreme Queen of Oblivion. Um, so the way she works, she is kind of more of your OTK kind of thing. Oh, sorry. So... His effect as well is he can't be destroyed by battle. All ritual monsters can't be destroyed by battle while they're on the field. And her effect is all ritual monsters can't be destroyed by card effects while on the field. So when the two of them are on the field, they kind of uh, have this little wall that people can't get around. And a lot of people actually will just scoop when they see the two of them on the field because they can't uh, have it. They, they kind of need to run a deck with non-targetable um, destruction or whatever. And a lot of decks actually don't really have that either. Um, so yeah. So rune now the decks obviously do have non-targetable uh, things they can beat you um, or stuff like alter guys that keep special summoning their stuff back uh, even after you destroy their whole field it's kind of hard to just OTK but anyway um, I still beat alter guys it's just that little bit harder when you were to OTK normal decks uh, that deck kind of defends itself a little bit better um, so yeah so this card has the uh, ability to uh, when it destroys a monster by battle you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the monster's attack Um so there's that, and then if it's used, ritual monsters are used to summon it, uh, it can attack twice. So there's that. So you're attacking with 29, 29, and then whatever uh, damage your opponent, I think it inflicts piercing as well. I'm not actually sure. No, I don't think it inflicts piercing. But basically what it does is they just say you have, you have, a, you have these two out, um, and you're going to be attacking with... If these two out, you're going to be attacking with this one. Uh, just say your opponent has, uh, I don't know, like a 2500 attacker. You're going to be inflicting 25 and inflicting whatever the, the difference is in the 29, the 400. Um, and then you're going to attack again for 29. And then you're going to attack with uh, Supreme, uh, Demise Supreme King. Now that's only if it's kind of like Alter Guys where they have monsters on the field. Other than that, you're going to be destroying uh, all your opponent's field with the um, the his destruction effect. Um, and Rune, you can have Rune on the field, she can defend herself because she can't be destroyed by uh, card effects. So um, you can activate the effect when she's on the field, doesn't destroy her. She'll stay on the field, uh, destroy all your opponent's cards and every other card you control as well. But you're kind of only going to be left on the field with just these two. Um, so you're going to attack 3,000, 29 and 29. Um, and then you're going to overlay on top for uh, a Gustav Max. So that's how you do the OTK. Um, so yeah, so that's why you need two of each. 
They're amazing cards, and the artwork that they've done for them are brilliant. So this is the budget version. Uh, Demise is too expensive, so Rune Queen of Oblivion um, does the job just as much. I never actually summoned them. This is just the pre-preparation uh, searcher. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can go into it. This card can attack twice. Um, and if just, oh, it can, once it if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it can attack again. And the only thing difference is... Um, Demise can destroy uh, the whole opponent's field uh, if you give up 2,000 life points and it's a 2,400 attacker. But this one still, that two attacks kind of help as well. Like if your opponent, just say, has destroyed your two cards and then you summon this out and they, they set something just for defense, you can attack and attack again for game. Um, just in case if your life points are kind of low after, uh, uh, just say you didn't use the first Armageddon or yes demise for uh ritual monster so you have to actually pay for your life points or whatever and um, the next two is demise agent of armageddon so run two of that and uh, one ruin angel of oblivion so what these cards do is when the ritual summon now a lot of time i actually don't ritual summon them i use them as ritual fodder um and i'll show you what you use it with now in a second but when these cards are sent to the graveyard for ritual summon they get to um uh like literally cannot activate so like uh, you can tag a ritual monster while it's face up on the field your opponent cannot activate card or effects in response to the activation of ritual monsters effects and then this one is a uh, you can tag a ritual monster you control while this face up card on the field your opponent cannot activate cards or effects uh, when your ritual monster declares an attack so they're really good little bits of defense as well um and they're searchable with preparation of rights so that's pretty cool as well just fear of fodder because you do need to ritual summon one of like one of the ritual monsters with a ritual monster so you're using fours and sixes to make the ten um and the sixes you're going to be running is two cyber angel ben ten so what basically what you're going to be able to do is um you're going to ritual summon a lot of time i try to get demise to my hand because uh rune is a lot easier accessible with benton so you get demise the the big supreme demise um and you ritual summon just with these two let's say Let's say because these two would be searchable preparation, this searchable preparation, this searchable manju, loads of different things to get them to your hand or whatever. Um, but basically what you do is you use these two. So it can't be, uh, its effect can't be targeted or, or destroyed by its own effect or whatever. And then also you get to search out your demise as well. And then if you've already had your incantation stuff on the field, you can use a cycle of the world to fuse into your two. Um, so I might show like a combo video after this maybe as well, just to show you how it works because it's actually really fun in that way. Uh, next we run three manju, very self-explanatory. Just searches any um, ritual spell or ritual monster from your deck. It's a level four as well, so it goes with your level sixes to 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 ritual summon into. Then we have uh, three of each of the incantations. These are really really good. Um, so basically what this does is if you have a ritual spell in your hand you reveal it and then you get to special summon this uh, in defense mode or whatever wherever you want and then you summon the second one talismandra and then you, talismandra's effect is basically when it's special summon you get to search uh, a ritual monster and candle's the exact opposite so this one is basically um Reveal a ritual monster in your hand and special summon Candol and when Candol is special summon you get to search a ritual spell from your deck. So these cards really work well in a searching thing. Uh, you run three of each because you want to open one of these in your hand first off um, as well as one of the ritual stuff as well. Um, but they're really really good and one is a six and one is a four so you have your ten there as well. So even when they're on the field you can use Cycle of the World um, and do it that way. Next I'm running one of Exodios, the ultimate forbidden lord. The reason this card is so good is basically you can uh, special summon it to your field and add all the monsters from your graveyard back into the deck. And then you have, uh, just say you have Cycle of the World and Demise or Cycle of the World and Ruin, you can uh, tribute this or even End of the World, this to level 10 as well. So you can just uh, ritual summon as well as like bouncing all your stuff back to the graveyard because you don't use it in the graveyard at all. Um, so that's why it's that a little bit better. Um, Next, we run three end of the world. You have to run three of the ritual spells. This is the old ritual spell. Uh, basically, it just is searched with preparation of rites. And this one uses the ones in the hand. So this is good for the ritual monsters. Uh, the only problem is it has to be exactly level 10. Um, but you use bent in and level 4 or stuff like that. You can use the incantation or manju in your hand if that was the case as well. Or exodios if you didn't want to special summon it. Um, the next thing, Cycle of the World. The reason we run two of this is, again, it is searchable with uh, pre-preparation of rites. Um... I'm not sure how it is searchable pre-preparation rights, but it actually is searchable pre-preparation rights, and um, because demise is in the name and stuff as well. 
Um, so yeah, so basically what you do with uh, this is if you have the incantations on the field or even if you have a, a, a dead, let's say, a ruin or a dead demise on the field that you can't use anymore, you can use this and special summon the opposite counterpart, the better half or whatever. Um, and then this has a second effect. You can banish it from the graveyard to search out one of your end of the world. Um, but you can't do it with the turn it's sent to the graveyard. So that's kind of bad. If it was able to just, as soon as it's sent to the graveyard, you could send it. This OTK deck would be a lot quicker. Um, <clears throat> next, we're running three pre-preparation of rights. It just searches your ruin. Uh, Queen of Oblivion, the small one, the level 8. And it searches out your uh, your ritual spells. So it's the main thing is just searching a ritual spells is pretty, pretty good. Um, plus, a lot of the time, ritual decks aren't good unless they can run that card. Except for Necros. And I think Gishkis are kind of good as well. Um... But yeah, next we have three preparation of rights. Preparation of rights it gets you your small demise, your small ruin, the level fours, or it gets your bent ten to your hand, and then you can search any one of the the ritual spells that was in the graveyard used earlier. Like so, just say if you use your demise and you used your your two monsters or whatever, end of the world and stuff is in the graveyard, and uh, you get ruined to your hand, but you have no fields or you have no ritual spell, and you get this, you can activate it and uh, search another one of the smaller ones if that was the case, and get your. Uh, Get your thing back to your hand, which is still pretty good. You get your ritual spell back to your hand. Now, uh, the only thing this will change to a one of, um, when the new foolish comes out that sends an extra deck, you pay half your life by and send uh, the extra deck monster to your graveyard, and then you can use it for the herald of, uh, I'm not sure Arclight, the synchro anyway. It searches out uh, any ritual monster or ritual spell. So. I'll be running two of those, but for now I have one of this. This is Ritual Sanctuary. So basically what you do is you discard a spell card and you can add a light ritual monster or one ritual spell card from your deck to your hand. You can shuffle any number of spell cards from your graveyard into the deck. Then target a life rate of a bunch of your graveyard whose level equals the number. So just say you want to get Manju back to your hand or whatever, you can do that. Um, but basically what it does is it just searches out your field spell or your ritual spells or some of your... Um, your light fairies, which is uh, your rune, the big one, rune eight, and the rune four, and ben ten as well as searches. So that's why it's a little bit better. Next, we're running one of the other field spell, breaking of the world. So the way this works is, you can target a ritual monster you control. Show one ritual monster in your hand till the end of his turn. His level becomes a shown ritual monster, which is actually pretty good. It's not too bad. I mean, uh, if you wanted to go uh, for some of your ritual stuff, um, the only other thing I use it for is when you ritual summon. Um, when you ritual summon one of your monsters, you get to either draw a card or destroy a card on the field. So let's say you do rune and there is a, a problematic card, you can destroy it. Other than that, you can draw a card just to extend to hopefully get your OTK off, OTK off uh, like that. Then we're running two Pot of Desires. Um, the reason we run two is because there is a lot of uh, set pieces to get. And a lot of the time you actually will get your set piece if you have all the cards, the pieces in your nearly all the pieces in your hand and you just have Pot of Desires. I'd go for Pot of Desires just to try and get your your last piece of your hand because otherwise like i said it's a glass can if you can't make the otk uh there's really no point you're just kind of grinding and the deck is good kind of good it can grind but it's not you know what i mean it's just annoying um anyway so next of all run a two terraformant to search out our three field spells uh self-explanatory then the one monster reborn to round up our 40 card deck the yoke is moving sorry to run up the four, uh, 40 card deck so basically i'll be taking this out and one uh ritual uh sanctuary to be using the new foolish card so i have to fix my uh my setup here okay so yeah so that's it um i don't run an extra deck you can run all the links and stuff i never really use it i was running on the Yu-Gi-Oh pro i'm running nightmare engine which is just cerberus mermaid uh unicorn uh phoenix and stuff like that Um, the only main one you actually need is super dreadnought rail cannon gustav max um the reason you do is because when you get demise and when you get rune on the field, if you haven't won already, you just it, the opponent will be less than two thousand life points. Uh, you exceed for the two of them, and then activate this card's effect and uh, go for game, which just inflicts two thousand damage. Everybody knows what this card does. But anyway, that's it for the video, guys. Please let me know what you think of this deck in the profile, uh, in the in the comments, in the profile, in the comments down below. It's a really really fun deck. I have to say, I love it. Uh, it's it's. It's the main thing I've been using. Um, I've done so many duels with Avon. I've won, I've won so many duels with this deck. It just If you get your OTK off, and the more I tweak with it, I'm just getting the OTK a lot quicker and better. I mean, obviously not with Monster Born there, but um, 
with that new foolish card hopefully it's not a secret when it comes out uh, i will do an update profile to show you the exact one to use you can also run number 77 deadly sins or whatever um, and you can run whatever ravenous spider whatever those ones are to go for that if you wanted to go for that either um, if your opponent did go for more cards and stuff, you didn't get your OTK off. You can go for that as well. I personally don't. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, the next video, I might run a bit more of an extra deck and show you guys. But Gustav Max, honestly, is the main one. If they destroy Gustav Max, um, it's not good. I mean, you have the Monster Reborn there to go back into your monsters. But chances are, like I said, Glass Cannon, if like... The deck can, while you're setting up your OTK, there is actually a lot of the cards you draw, you can keep going into it and into it. Um, and even if, the, like, there's a few times where I got ashed and ghost ogred and stuff, and uh, I was still able to get to my two pieces. Now, a lot of the time, you will only end up ending with one of them, and if your opponent can't, like, just say you end up with Demise, if your opponent can't uh, target it and destroy it with a card effect, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of left um, a bit stuck. And the same with... Uh, uh, rune, uh, supreme queen or whatever. If uh, if your opponent can't destroy her by battle, can't destroy her by battle, uh, they're actually kind of stuck, and um, because she can't be destroyed by card effects. So, um, non-target removal beats this deck. But anyway, that's it for the video, guys. Yeah. So let me know what you think, and uh, good luck.